In this lesson, we're going to take a look at something called factorial uh, notation. And we're going to introduce a new button, which you probably haven't used on your calculator before. Or maybe you have. I'm not sure. That depends. Um, but we're going we're gonna to actually see how to do a little bit of new math today, at least. Uh, our last lesson was on multiplying and adding, which hopefully are not new concepts to you, even though the way we're using them might be a little bit different. But today, there's actually going to be a little bit of new math. So let's again jump into examples right off the bat to see how this works. And uh, I don't know if, if your school has one of those beautiful portable signs that they put in front and they go out with a big box of like plastic letters and they make different words on the front of the school with the letters. So, you know, they're like, you know, have a great summer or something like that. And you always run out of certain letters because they're more common than others. Anyway, we're going to we're going to start off with a nice sign that just says literally nice N-I-C-E four letters. We're going to put them up there and um, we're going to we're going to assume that we want to rearrange these letters to make something obscene because I don't know about you but when I was a teenager that's what we were always trying to do is like what can we make out of those letters on the sign to make that say something completely inappropriate so if you're anything like that your, your brain is immediately going to go okay how can I rearrange the letters in nice to make a bad word and I specifically chose nice because I don't think you can. If you can make a bad word out of that, I was going to say let me know, but no, don't let me know. That's probably a bad idea. But anyway, um, we're going to rearrange the letters in nice to try and make uh, as many different words as possible. And the way to think about this, and this is going to be a common a common theme throughout the, the problem solving in this course, is if you want to know how many ways you could do something, or if you want to do it, like come up with a number, picture doing the actual activity in your head. Okay, so I want you to kind of clear your mind and I want you to picture the following. You're walking up to the sign. It has four letters on it, spelling nice, N-I-C-E. You take those letters off the sign. You are now holding those four letters in your hand. Okay, so this is, this is where we are right now. You've got four letters in your hand. You're going to make a four letter word from those letters. So my question to you is, how many letter choices do you have for the first letter in the word? So you're looking at the sign, you're looking at the four letters in your hand, and you should be thinking, hmm, that first letter could be any of these four. It could be an N, an I, a C, or an E. So that gives us four possible choices for our first letter selection. Now for the second letter selection, we no longer have four choices because you're only holding three, three more letters. Whatever letter you put up first is no longer available, obviously. So for your second choice, you have three options. And then you're holding two letters. So you're, for your third choice, you have two options. And your last letter, um, you don't really have any choice. There's, there's one option. You've got to put that letter up because it's the only thing you have left. And now we ask ourselves, are these ands or ors? And if you think about it for even brief, the briefest of moments, I think you'll realize that you're choosing a first letter and a second letter and a third letter and a fourth letter. So we're going to do multiplication of all of those. So the number of possible words we could make, we're not going to list all the words, but the number of words we could make is four times three times two times one. So that would be four times three is 12 times two is 24 times one is still 24. So there's 24 possible words. If you're feeling brave, feel free to list them. But honestly, um, it, it doesn't matter as long as we know how many words we can make. Okay, so I want you to pause the video uh, and try example two. It's going to be the exact same thing, except we're going to make a four letter word given 12 different letters. So we're holding 12 different letters in our arms and we want to make a four letter word from it. Use a similar logic to try and approach this question and figure out how many different possible words you could make. Now, I will point out um, that in, in the top example one, you'll notice I, I didn't mention this before, but notice how the word words is in quotation marks. The reason I did that is because in this course, when we talk about how many words can you make, what we're really meaning is how many letter lists can we make? How many different orders of letters can we make? Um, they may not all be English words. Some of them are probably not words in any language. 
In fact, I would say most of them are not words in any language. So we're going to call them words, even if they aren't really words. Okay, so pause the video now, try example two, and when you're done, come back and see if your logic holds. All right, assuming that you pause the video and try this already, if you can visualize yourself doing this, you're holding 12 letters in your arms, which means you have 12 choices for the first letter of the word, and then you have 11 choices for the second letter, and then 10, and then nine. Okay, so this is obviously a much bigger answer than our last one, and another reason why we never want to have to make a tree diagram or actually make a list of all possible words that have four letters out of those 12. Um, but we have 12 times 11 times 10 times 9 is 11,880. And by the way, I will point out that despite the fact that I am a proud patriotic Canadian, uh, I do put commas in my uh, my numbers between spaces to represent like clumps of a thousand or a million, etc. Uh, and the, the biggest reason for that is because when I'm typing out numbers like that, if I just leave a space like Canadians do, uh, it can easily put like the 11 at the end of one line and then the 880 at the beginning of the next line because it considers it two words. So I, I always use commas to uh, separate. I also find it easier to read. If you don't do that, that's fine as well. Okay, so now onto the idea of today's lesson, which is factorials. So a factorial, I'm just gonna jump into the notation and then we'll try and explain what that really means. Uh, any number factorial is equal to n, its, its own value, times the number one below it, times the number one below that, and you keep counting down until you get to one. So for instance, six factorial is equal to six, its own value, times five, times four, times three, times two, times one. So we start at six and we keep going down until we hit one, multiply all those numbers together. And uh, if you do that, you're going to get out uh, 720. Okay, um, now I will point out that calculators should have a factorial button on them. So uh, depending on what your calculator looks like, that button could look like this. It might actually be just a exclamation mark, but we call it a factorial. Despite the fact that the, it's an exclamation mark in math, we're going to call that a factorial. So six factorial would be six and then that button, or your button might be an X exclamation, so X factorial, or your button could be an N factorial. And you're going to want to look through and find one of those buttons on your calculator. Now, if you can't find one, it could mean that your calculator is of a little bit higher model and that you have those in some sort of draw, like menu or something, menu option. Uh, on many calculators, these are just going to be the second function or inverse or something um, of one of the numbers. So on my calculator, it's like second function number three is a factorial. If you cannot find it anywhere, you're going to want to do one of two things. First is you're going to want to Google the model of your calculator along with um, the term factorial and see if you can find a guide somewhere that tells you how to do a factorial on your calculator. Or if you've got a manual that came with your calculator and you still have it, you can look it up in there. Chances are, though, it's going to be easier to Google it. If at the end of that you have not been able to find it, I hate to say it, but you're probably going to have to go find a new calculator. Um, almost everything we do for the remainder of the course is going to involve three buttons. And if, if a calculator has one of them, it, it should have all three. If it has none of them, you can't really do any of the math that we're going to be doing for the rest of the course on it. So the other two buttons, by the way, are uh, NCR and NPR. Uh, the PR or the NPR, the P is for permutation. The NCR, the C is for combination. And you'll notice that's the name of the next two units and probability and probability distributions, the name of our last two units, are entirely based on those things as well. Um, the good news is the calculators that have this should be relatively inexpensive, um, probably in about the, the $12 to $15 range. And uh, 
I will say that if you have one of the calculators that has these in a drop down menu, you may still want to go out and get one of those cheaper calculators if you can afford it. Um, it's so much faster if they're actually buttons on the calculator. I just want you to think about how like grade nine and 10 would have gone if you had to do a drop down menu and select like by scrolling over uh, if every time you needed a plus minus times divided or equal sign. It's doable, but oh, it's it's time consuming. Okay, um, so six factorial is just six times five times four times three times two times one. And I think if you look at the, the examples that we did above, example one and two, you'll see why factorials actually come into play with real problem solving. Uh, example two is a little bit different because you'll notice it starts at 12, but it ends at nine. It doesn't go all the way down to one. And we're gonna take a look at a little bit of that in one second. Uh, just before I go any further though, I'm going to point out that this only works for natural numbers. So uh, that equation, n factorial equals n times the number below it times the number below it until you hit 1, only works for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. Natural numbers. If you have a fraction or a decimal, it does not work. It's undefined. And I think you'll understand why that makes sense if you think about something like 3.5 factorial with that definition because it says start at three and a half and then to a number that's one below that and then do a number that's one below that and stop when you hit one. Well, 3.5 factorial would be 3.5 times 2.5 times 1.5 times 0 0.5 times negative 0 0.5 and I'm gonna keep going till I hit one, but I never will because I missed it. So the definition breaks if you try to put in a decimal or a, uh, a fraction. If you put in a negative number, then you have the same problem. Negative three factorial would be negative three times negative four times negative five. And I'm gonna keep going and I'll never hit one because I've already gone past it. Now, there is one special case I'm gonna draw your attention to and we'll, we'll come back and you'll see why this is true later. But if you have zero factorial, it is defined, it just doesn't follow the equation above. Uh, zero factorial will equal one. And that's just a straight up definition. So one factorial is one by def or by the notation that we used or by the definition we just used. Zero factorial is just one because we said it is. But we will see examples of why that has to be the case or why that is true um, soon enough. Okay, uh, example four. Let's evaluate some expressions here. So seven factorial divided by four factorial. I'm going to show you that there's a long way to do it and then there's a short way to do it. So here's the idea. 7 factorial by definition is 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And on the bottom, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, if I look at those carefully, you'll realize that I can cancel out some stuff there, specifically the 4, 3, 2, and 1 on the top and bottom cancel. And then I'm just left with 7 times 6 times 5, which is 210. Okay, so that's how to do it, like kind of formally showing you why it happens. But if you look at it, you can just say, okay, 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial. In your head, just say, okay, everything from 4 factorial down, or everything from 4 down is going to cancel. So I could just jump immediately to the seven times six times five step without writing out the first one because I know everything below that is gonna go away because of the bottom. Similarly, in the next one, I really don't wanna to have to write out all of the numbers from 100 down to one or 98 down to one because then I'm writing out 198 numbers. Um, but if I think about the logic about how this worked, the top says 100 times 99 and then times 98 and everything below 98. However, the bottom is going to cancel the 98 and everything below 98. So that's all I'm going to be left with is 100 times 99, which is 9,900. So there's an example where solving it is actually easier to do manually than with your calculator. And in fact, if you um, try using your calculator, let's just take a brief moment now. See what the biggest number you can put into a factorial is before your calculator breaks. 
So just take a moment right now and actually try that. Okay, if you haven't done it already, pause until you have, but I think if you try it, most calculators, and this, this may not be true for some of the newer ones or some of the better ones, but most calculators, the big, biggest number you can put into a calculator that it won't break is nine, uh, 69 factorial. And the reason for that is because 69 factorial is 1.7 times 10 to the exponent 98. And as soon as you multiply that by 70, you're going to get a number that's a little bigger than 10 to the 100. And um, most calculators can't handle a 10 to the exponent bigger than 99. So 100 breaks it. Now, what that means is that um, the biggest thing your calculator can do is the number of ways of arranging 69 items in order, which is not really a lot. Think about taking two of the larger classes in your school with a total of 69 students and saying, guys, I want you to go line up on the sports field. The number of different lines those 69 students could make is actually bigger than the number of atoms in the universe. That, that's crazy. So um, obviously you're not gonna be able to list them all because even if you could write really small, if your answer used up one atom of, of you know pencil lead, you, you'd run out of atoms of pencil lead before you could even write out all the answers. So yeah, 69 factorial is a big number. So it turns out that any number bigger than 69 factorial, we're gonna have to do manually like this. We're gonna have to play some trick if we want it to work. Our calculator will not help us. Okay, so now let's do one slightly different example. Um, 10 factorial over six factorial, three factorial. So now we have two factorials on the bottom instead of one. Um, what we're gonna do is, is leave out the smaller of the two. And if there's three or four or something like that, the same thing, consider the biggest one, ignore the smaller ones. Uh, we still have to deal with them all, but choosing the, the biggest one on the bottom is gonna make our lives a little easier. So if this was just 10 factorial divided by six factorial, it would be 10 times nine times eight times seven. And then I would ignore, ignore all the six and lower because it's gonna cancel out with the six factorial on the bottom. But I do still need to, uh, to consider the three factorial on the bottom, which is three times two. And normally when we write out factorials, um, other than when I'm first kind of showing them to you to explain them, we don't bother writing the times one because obviously it doesn't do anything. Now at this point, um, you could play some cancellation and I will just for interest sake, meaning that uh, I could divide this by three and this by three. I could divide this by two and this by two. I could have divided other things as well, but the bottom stuff will all cancel out. And on the top, I'm left with 10 times three times four times seven. And if I choose my order of multiplication correctly, three times four is 12. 12 times seven is 84 and 84 times 10 is 840. I should be able to do that calculation without a calculator. Okay, so that's kind of the manipulating factorials when they're given as numbers. Uh, example five is where students really, really stretch their brains a little bit. And that's taking a look at, at factorials with variables in them. So example five is just asking us to simplify each of these expressions. The first one being n plus three times n plus two times n plus one times n factorial. Now, just to be clear, the factorial is on the n, not on the rest of it. If I wanted the, that entire thing to be factorial, I'd have to put brackets around the whole thing and then put the factorial on the end. Um, it's only the n that gets factorialed. So most students struggle with this one for a while. And when I show them the answer, they're like, that doesn't make sense, but it does. So I'm gonna say that the answer to this one it's just n plus three factorial. And the reason for that is that n plus three factorial is n plus three times the number one below it, which is n plus two, times the number one below that, which is n plus one, times the number one below that, which is n. And then it could keep going, but everything below that is covered in the n factorial. So that's actually kind of a useful property. We can take streams of numbers and instead of expanding them out, uh, expanding out a factorial, I can condense them into one factorial. 
Now this next one is a little bit more interesting or a little bit different. If I want to play with n plus 1 factorial over n minus 2 factorial, I can expand out the top to be n plus 1 times n times n minus 1, and then I could keep going with n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4, but those are all going to cancel with the bottom, which is n minus 2 factorial. Um, so that's what I have as my answers, n plus 1 times n times n minus 1, but we should actually uh, simplify that a little bit instead of writing it as three, uh, three numbers multiplied together. I'm going to point out that we can do a little shortcut. The n plus 1 at the beginning times the n plus or n minus 1 at the end, that's actually a difference of squares. So that's just going to be n squared minus 1. And we still have to multiply it by the n. And that's going to be n cubed minus n. So our factorial version there actually did simplify down significantly into just a cube minus a single value. Now, I should point out that in this question, or this a question like this, people say, well, how do you know that n is big enough that this is even going to work? Because what if n is just like 1? Then the bottom is negative 1 factorial. And, and you're right. Um, this is only going to work if n is at least 2. So if n is any smaller than 2, it means the bottom is going to be a negative number factorial. Uh, the top is going to be fine until we get down to n equals negative 1, but the bottom will break. So that equation will be true for uh, n greater than or equal to 2, but the original equation was also true only for n greater than or equal to 2. Okay, so again, I don't think anything really too complicated here today besides a little bit of new notation and something to think about, and the only way you get better at it is to try it. So go give the homework a shot and let me know if there's any questions that are really, really stumping you. Until next time.